Well, we're on the seventh week of this a sermon series on one, one life, which means that relationships with other Christians are foundational to the life of faith. They're how God shapes us, speaks to us, calls us, grows us. One mind. That early church was dynamic because it focused on the central importance of the life and death and resurrection of Jesus that confirmed the character of God's loving reign and its reality. One heart. The community mirrored the authentic love of God and its commitment to relationships with one another of vulnerability and compassion and grace. One way meant that the faith and the hope and the love lived in Christian community is dynamic and always on the move, breaking down social barriers that alienate people from one another. One way, always moving outward. And the community sustains this unity with God and one another with three central practices. And we heard uh, two weeks ago about pushing one another forward, holding each other accountable for growing um, in Christ, lifting one another up, encouraging each other in faith and hope. And today we talk about sending each other out, which corresponds, I think, to the um, one way, moving, moving outward. And so the community grows. I've always uh, been a little bit intimidated by the Great Commission that uh, was the passage from Matthew that Sherry read, um, Jesus telling the disciples, um, go and make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded you and uh, baptizing them. And I've always felt a little bit intimidated by that because, and, and a little bit at, uh, at unease with it because it seems to me like it, it, it has a, a kind of um, me mechanical uh, sense about it, that, that it's we have something and we give it to you and it's uh, one way outward like this and uh, we make disciples like we would make a house or something and it doesn't quite capture for me the dynamic relational life of faith and sharing faith and being built up in faith. So I really like the picture from First Thessalonians of that community, because that's kind of like the sausage-making version of making disciples. <laughs> and I find the sausage-making version, uh, you know what I'm talking about, right? You don't want to know how, you don't want to know too much about how laws uh, come about, because you, you don't want to know what's in the sausage. Um, but I find looking at the sausage-making process in Thessalonians, to be really greatly reassuring, and it, and it, it really helps me get a, a better, more relatable picture of what it means to make disciples and what it means to be sent out to spread the message a little bit farther than our walls. Uh, when I was in the hospital um, for a while when I was pregnant and um, I was on really complete bed rest, and I, so I was, for a long period of time, just not getting out of bed. But it was one of those rooms where there's a wall between, but that's, there's open, you can, the nurse comes in, they go this way, that way, so you can hear what's going on in the other room. And uh, in, that, in that room, uh, one night I, I heard a voice from a woman who'd been in the room uh, adjacent to mine for a couple nights ask me, um, are you saved? We hadn't talked uh, before that. And um, that was a very kind of disconcerting experience for me. It was so unrelational. It was so out of context. It was so lay it on you. And that's been kind of the image that I've had uh, or afraid to have of that go make disciples of all nations, that it's just like laying it on somebody. But what I see in Thessalonians is dynamic. Faith is movement. Faith is coming back and forth. There's an ebb and flow, and, and that seems more real to me. That's what I hope 
is happening in the intentional Christian community of small groups of all kinds. So let me say a word about sending one another out. Now that uh, seems a little bit like making disciples, kind of mechanical. So maybe you could think of sending one another out in terms of helping each other move out of the comfort zone, making a difference, encouraging each other to meet a need, or to reach out to someone who is feeling unloved or lonely. Maybe sending each other out is as simple as trying to widen the circle of God's love. Paul and uh, Silvanus and Timothy were three missionaries who had gone to the church in Thessalonica. And there they had established a congregation and they'd preached the gospel and they'd been heartened by the reception there. They did this in the midst of a time when they were themselves facing a lot of challenges. Um, They had been mistreated at the previous place they'd been. They'd come to Thessalonica, probably rather wearied from that. They shared the message of God's love and forgiveness and of the kingdom coming. And they found the people there receiving them with open hearts and with a powerful faith. Now, as they experienced that faith that led them to turn away from the previous idols that they'd worshipped and kind of start life oriented in God's direction, they found that they were changing some of their relationships, maybe losing some of their friendships or not spending as much time with certain relationships and alliances, and it was shifting and changing the social fabric around them. And that wasn't always welcomed. We heard uh, words about afflictions and persecutions in the passage that Sherry read. And we don't know exactly what kinds of persecutions and afflictions they were struggling with, but the people around them in their social circle were letting them know in different ways that they did not like this change that had happened. So there was some struggle. And you can see that Paul is actively you know, worrying about this new Christian community that has been established. Are they going to make it? How are they going to do? And for reasons that are not clear in the passage, he's separated from them with Silvanus and, and Timothy. And that congregation, which is, has a fairly new faith, is struggling with these outward persecutions Paul knows about, and he's terribly worried that they're going to lose their faith, that they're going to um, not believe in the good news because of the difficulties that they're experiencing. And uh, so finally, he sends Timothy into Thessalonica again to check on them. And it's interesting, because you always think of Paul as this kind of heroic, very confident, certain person. But when I read this passage, I see Paul really, really worrying about the impact of what's going on in that community, and maybe struggling with a sense of uncertainty about his own effectiveness, his own call, right? Is God really at work? Is the message that I gave there really growing? Is it strong enough? Is it... Paul himself seems to me to be dealing with a little bit of doubt, a little bit of worry and fear. So when the message comes back that yes, actually, in spite of all the persecutions, they're still believing, they're growing, they're doing well, they're hanging in there, Paul talks with just incredible depth about how much encouraged he is by that. He says, I have life. We have life because of your faith. So this dynamic 
sharing of faith and encouraging one another in times of weakness and strength is part of what happens in Christian community. I am, um, <clears throat> sometimes when you uh, are a minister and you see people in your congregation uh, rising up and changing and doing bold things uh, and you hear about it, you're really scared. <laughs> I remember one uh, Sunday afternoon I got a call from a woman who was um, real active in the church. She was a high school teacher and and one of those high school teachers who just connected and cared about the uh, youth so well um, and threw herself wholeheartedly into activity. She didn't have children of her own um, and uh, it was almost like the whole school was her family. She had just a real passion for kids and was really the kind of person who took the time to find out what was actually going on in the kids' lives. And, and she called me uh, and said, you know, I've been thinking about something you said, which always <laughs> gets me scared. And because um, lots of times people hear when you don't know that you said anything like that. Uh, she said, I've been thinking about what you said about, you know, stepping out and, and being more bold and taking risks. And um, there's a girl that I've gotten to know, and she's in a bad family situation, and her parent, her mom's really unstable, keeps moving all these different places. She's having a hard time getting through school because she's just going from one place to another. And I think, um, I think I'm going to take, I think I'm going to um, uh, take her in and see if we can work out an arrangement where she lives with me and finishes high school here. And um, I was like, oh, great, did I say that? But yeah, that is so wonderful. And it was wonderful because she's such a loving person and such a, a, an even-tempered uh, even person. I thought, oh, if anyone can, you know, have a teenager that has not been raised with them, come and live with them for a period of time. She's awesome to do it. But I also knew, uh, you know, I had teenagers myself. And um, it, it, it's not always the easiest stage of life. They're dealing with a lot. They're changing, they're growing, they're trying to figure out boundaries. And that's when you've known them all their lives. Uh, and I, I thought, oh my goodness, what is she going to do? And I realized that my faith had to grow because her faith had challenged me. And over uh, the next rest of the time while I was there, and, and even since then, um, we were in a lot of communication. And, and sometimes, um, sometimes we'd be talking through some pretty challenging things. Sometimes I and other people in the church would need to step in and help out. And, and uh, do some of the things that uh, were extras that, that came along with being a shelter and a home. And, and sometimes we needed to offer her words of encouragement and remind her of, of the calling that had been placed on her heart. So one of the things that we do for one another in Christian community as we're sending each other out is that we just listen and help each other get in touch with the way God might be calling us to serve. I love a quote from uh, Frederick Buechner. It says, the place God calls you, the place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Kathy had correctly identified a place where her deep gladness, loving to see young people thrive, and the world's deep hunger met. God had really laid on her heart a significant calling. And as part of her Christian community, we helped support her in that, provided her encouragement, reminded her of all that she was able to do on the days when she felt discouraged about the things she wasn't able to do. Sometimes we pitched in and helped support the burden. And together, we were expanding the circle of love. 
that for me is an example, a powerful example of how it is that we send one another out and help each other expand our horizons. Now, each one of us has some way in which we're called to serve. We have some kind of gladness, some gift that we love to give, and some place in the world where we see a deep hunger. It can be so different. That's one of the beautiful ways that God uses Christians in such different ways because we have different passions and different gifts, and somehow the call of God can be for each one of us to serve according to what's joyful for us to give, where we find that it will be meaningfully used. One of the reasons that uh, in our small groups, uh, we have a time where we ask each other questions, what are you anxious about? What are you grateful for? What are you struggling with? What are you learning? Those questions are helping us to get our hearts and minds attuned to the way God works in our lives so that we can begin to name and claim the call of God in our hearts and our minds. Now, in the nitty-gritty of real life, and whether you're in a small group or not, you are in a relationship with some other Christians. Uh, in the nitty-gritty of real life, these things can be kind of difficult to keep productive and managing. And it's interesting now I'm getting to hear back from uh, some of the small group leaders, some of the challenges that are, that are being faced. Well, you know, I, a little bit of skepticism. Um, I don't know how much I trust the other people in the group. I don't know them that well. Um, well, everybody's so much the same. I'm not feeling any challenge coming here or did I really want to do this for, when is this over? Um, <laughs> the people in my group are not at the same stage of life as I am, and so it's, I'm not finding a lot of common ground. Whether it is uh, your uh, small group or relationships that are intentional and faith-building with other Christians, we are called to trust that God is speaking to us, growing us, and reaching out to us through relationships with other Christians. And partly, our challenge is simply to have faith that God will work through such common means and to also believe that we need to bring ourselves to that process, including our questions, our skepticism, our hopes, and our problem solving. So I would invite you, if you are in a small group, to see yourself as challenged to bring your whole self there to your intentional Christian community. And if you're not in a small group, to think about significant relationships with other Christians in your life and how they can be, become more significant opportunities for sharing and growing in faith. Because there's enough in God to speak to each person's need. There's enough in God to form a basis of common ground to share with anyone. There's enough in God, enough love, to fill us and even spill over through us into the world that so needs God's love. May it be so.